Yeah. Do you know the Zen saying not knowing is most intimate? Mm, I don't, but I like it. Yeah. Not knowing is most intimate. Mm -hmm. And that if we can just be with that and feel that sensation of restlessness as it, when it first keeps in or that um, desire for something to be different and just step back from that and, and have that, have that simple thing be the fundamental offering. Mm. Yeah, I love that. I love not knowing. <laughs> it's, it's, very, it's very erotic, you know? <laughs> it is. It is. That is the ecology of erotic emergence that we're all mm -hmm. being extruded from all the time. But mm -hmm. it's like there's such a, a, that agility between yin and yang is so essential to really meet that, to like, allow that to be like, Oh yeah, I don't, who knows what's coming up today. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I, find, I find it so interesting that you come in with this feeling that there's some resistance in your system. Cause I don't feel that at all from you. I think, you know, I been processing in the back of my head as we're sitting here. Um, I think about this idea well, with the mismatch thing, I'm thinking uh -huh. of those things, those toys um, that have the different shapes that you mm -hmm. put in them, you know, and you take the shapes. And I feel like what, what often how I um, discern and read things is rather than looking directly at the thing energetically, I read the negative space around it. Uh -huh. um, and when I'm looking at the mismatch thing, I'm seeing the things coming into my field actually through a bigger space than they need. So there's no contact of edges. Mm. So in, in feeling the not feeling the expected contact, mm -hmm. the place my mind has gone is, is there something here that I'm, that I'm, constricted around that I'm not seeing, but I'm seeing actually there's so much space for those things to come in that I can't feel them or, or I can, or I'm feeling them. They're contextualized in such a large space that they're very, very subtle. Uh -huh. It's a very subtle, um, sensation in, in the context of my system. Um, so it's interesting to learn that going to suspecting resistance is where my mind goes and that it just kind of <laughs> glossed over the other possibility in terms of, in terms of looking at why that might be the experience. So you sound like you have some experience of like being in that absolute space and pain will be a great teacher of that. So you have a sense of that capacity to expand completely beyond the body into the absolute, mm -hmm. right? I'm sensing that you have Satori experiences and Kensho, like that kind of stuff. So how, how is your skill with walking that third, that third line of the braid between the relative and the absolute, like being able to be fully embodied with with the knowledge of that all around you. Mm. That is definitely a skill that I'm learning. There are different, there are uh, a few select relational contexts where that's really easy. Mm -hmm. And I'm getting the embodied experience of what that is. And I can feel it like slowly, slowly moving out into other areas. But that's definitely a, a skill development. Well, that's, that's the next level skill. Yeah, it's really something. <laughs> yeah, like once you have that insight and you know what, what reality is made of. Right. Then being able to navigate this reality fluidly from within that boundless envelope. Right. Is, is bound to be clumsy at first. And sometimes that will feel... Like sometimes that will feel like resistance or regression, mm. but I don't, I don't get the sense 
from you that like you're in danger of losing that experience of the boundlessness at all. Like that that's, there's not going to be regression there. So like how are, how like, Oh man, that that it's that transforming line again. It's taming the pet. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's taming the pet. It's understanding that the ego is not to be murdered. Yeah. But, but it's just to be trained to poop outside. <laughs> Do you, you know, <laughs> perfect metaphor that it's yep, not yep. about like ego death and rebirth will come and come and come and come like the molting of a dragonfly you'll put yeah. you'll have like 14 different moltings at right. least before maturity right so but how where is your allowing with that and how and how um how much, how much are you forcing that evolution or forcing yourself out of, out of the relative and back into the absolute when the relative becomes uncomfortable? Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it does. I mean, my, like, I, I don't, even if I'm engaging in the relative, I don't leave the absolute but right. what has been my experience has been a being in a pocket world of absoluteness mm-hmm. and then, you know, like engaging in the relative world with, un, I mean, with the ego, with an unintegrated, um, peace mm-hmm. and my, my inclination has been like, I just won't engage with other people or I'll engage. I've spent much of my life taking care of kids, Mm -hmm. um, you know, and engaging in a place where it's like, we're both in our little pocket worlds of absoluteness. So we can engage relic, you know, we can have that relation and we're both in the same thing and there aren't these specific Mm -hmm. demands. So my, my inclination has been hermitage for sure. Um, yeah. My, my inclination was also humans under five and over 75, please. Totally. <laughs> totally. <laughs> yep. It's between five and 75 that people really become impossible and it's just painful really to watch how they get in their own way. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> oh, I, t- I can totally relate to this thing and how, and, and just how much it can feel like I mean, it felt so much like resistance to me for so long that I just became an alcoholic. Like Mm -hmm. I felt so, I felt so alien Mm -hmm. and like just so out of place. Like my, my sense of belonging was so intimately rooted in the absolute that I didn't want to come back. Mm -hmm. Like I just wanted to hang out there all the time. Yeah. And for me, it wasn't really until I took the Bodhisattva vows that I was like, Oh, that's what that's for. Mm -hmm. I need to tame this pet. And when I first went to Zen, it would, there was like, well, wild is great, but meticulous and wild is more useful. Mm. Mm -hmm. So the value of form and, and, and being able to be intimate with the coalescence and deliquescence of form from moment to moment enables, enables deep service. Mm-hmm. Service so deep that it can be intimidating to show up for because it's a massive responsibility, but that's exactly what your reading is saying. Mm-hmm. That there's no question about your field. Mm-hmm. This, this restlessness and discomfort with form this wanting form to change faster than it's changing wanting the molting and new skin to happen faster than it's happening. That's just mental resistance. That's just a matter of taming the pet. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. And I'm hearing too, in what you're saying, um, I, I really feel this. I mean, right now I live on 300 acres of land in oh, wow really the middle of nowhere. <laughs> where? Middle of nowhere, where? In Wisconsin. Oh, nice. Yeah. Like the, I drive 45 miles to the co-op, you know, <laughs> to go grocery shopping, like <laughs> that kind of distance.